I can't believe it. The gray jay can fly away with a whole pancake. But I just had three, now they're all gone. Another morning at the cabin. Have my morning coffee. Pancakes go fast when I haul them off at one at a time. I exposed my natural gravel in my lane there yesterday afternoon. And the morning grouse are appreciative. Goofing off so much this trip, it's time I get out and take a walk down the trail that I come in on in the winter time to get all the any fallen trees off. So makes a nice smooth travel in later. Take my little John Sered CS 2236T, little top handle saw with fuel tops out at 10 pounds. So I can take that along very easily but I need to get her sharpened up I just keep throwing stuff into the the workshop side of the woodshed here trying to keep it out of the rain so I got quite a mess and a pile in there I'll We'll get that straightened out tomorrow. But as far as the actual woodshed part, we're looking pretty good. There's the pile we were bringing in yesterday off that tree we brought down and some of the other ones and filled up that space back there. Over here in the dark corner, those two a couple stacks back on that side, there'll be the nice dry aspen that I'll burn it around New Year's. So we're in really good shape. Just about packed up, ready to go out and clear my winter trail. But there was some, there was a few male spruce grouse out here and. The sun was shining a little bit and I was just just about to go out and see if I could get that rare shot of a spruce grouse in sunlight when it both of them took off in a flash and right behind them there was a sharp shinned hawk. Well that sharp shinned hawk I suppose he'd get the job done but it's a pretty small occipiter to be trying to take on a big bird like a spruce grouse but of all my times over the years sitting here watching, that's the first time I'd ever seen a sharp shin come in and try to kid a grouse. One other time I did, I was able to get a, a goshawk when it came in, but they're a pretty alert bird. Those male spruce grouse were well out in front of that sharp shinned hawk. Oh, had a little bit of hot coffee left. And I always have my little treat. Got some. I brought up two bags of dark chocolate M&Ms and when I opened up that second bag I'd made a mistake and it was the what? The, the nut variety but they're going down pretty good. Oh, and the table, I think it's here to stay. 
really like it. I realized, you know, I eat my dinner. I got a place to put my plate. I can swivel over if it's I want to sit at a table. If I had a guest, they could sit on the other side. Where's my cup? A lot more efficient. I was reaching way down there for that cup, kind of back around. And here I can set that cup right there on the edge. If I have a hot pan, oftentimes you know I eat out of those saucepans and nice metal surface. Work out good. I have my reading right down here on the shelf. We'll figure out a few other little tweaks to make it even better. If it stays this wet until it freezes up, the one advantage is a lot of my trails are going to be really smooth. Right here heading out front of us, that water channel is about 8 to 10 inches deep and it's where the beavers made a run, dug it out right up through my trail to get back into those nice birch trees. They're actually hauling us all the way back out to Hawks Pond. I mean that's why they raised that pond up so much. They were that ambitious. And then what happens is they finally get figured out that let's that's too much work. And they pull out and they go to a different pond for a while where the vegetation has returned. For an aspen tree, this is a really old tree. I'm very surprised that it's lived this long without the top snapping off and coming off. But you can just go by the bark and how big it is. But that is an old aspen. Speaking of cedar trees, Notice this one a number of years ago. I have no idea how long it's been laying flat. But it did just blow over from the roots. Snow load probably brought it down. But I'm sure this tree had stood here for centuries before it finally fell. And now it's just up off the ground enough that it might be here that long again before it finally rots away. Here'd be a normal size cedar tree. And then here's Big Papa. The joke's on me. As I was walking away, I realized that this green vegetation down here is the top of that big, huge cedar tree. These limbs are growing straight up. It's in an open area, so it's getting plenty of sunlight. The tree's up off the ground, so now it's really got a long time to live yet. Oh, those blasted beaver. Most of the time I really like what they do. They make all these nice dams back here and back up the water and give me some nice ponds for the swans. But why did they have to drop this tree right across my trail? It's going to give my little top handle saw a workout trying to cut through this from both sides. This must have taken a few days. The one thing is, they're a fair distance from water and I don't see any of the top limbs trimmed off here yet. Now you notice you don't, you don't see my chainsaw. I've got it put in my pack here and up to this point and I'm going to wait till later. I'm going to, I'll cut this one way back out. I didn't want to start that chainsaw up because it's really been a good day for walking through the woods quietly. Well, not when I'm slicing through the water, but the rest of the time, pretty quiet out here. And I was hoping to maybe sneak up on some good photo ops. Now, I, you know, I don't like to stress things or anything, but I want, I got this picture off my game camera last week. Now, People talk about Sasquatch this, Sasquatch that. They always got these pictures that aren't so great. Well, I wouldn't even show you this, but it's just another Sasquatch picture that's not so great. But when I look at it, I really think what's going on is Sasquatch is trying to take a selfie with my game camera. But he was too close. Now here, you see what you think. Now that went pretty fast, so let's let's I'm gonna put it in a slow motion 
and we'll try that again. But again, you know, people have asked me about Scotchquatch up here. I, uh, I don't know. But now I'm really starting to wonder. But again, I kept my camera at the ready today as I snuck through the woods. Just hoping. On my original land records that I have, it says that this was the Hooten place. H-U-T-O-N. Then when we started doing a little research, we found out that's, no, that's wrong. This is the Hudson cabin. You'll have to come and check this out, Alex. Trail's been in pretty good shape, so I think I'm just going to drop my gear here, get my saw out, and I'll cover the rest of the trail. I want to come back here Enjoy this for a while. I got some brats along. Yeah, I've got some brats this time too. Um, got some to use up, so come back here. Take a long lunch. Nice having a small saw here. I've made it out two miles from the cabin. There's about eight tenths of a mile to go on out to the, the roadway to park in the winter time, but it goes through cedars like this and as I look ahead there I get this one branch right in front of me cut off, but it's not worth the effort of slogging through calf deep water all the way just to check it out. That trail all the water that parallels this trail. This is a trail that I just cut between the cedars real narrow, but it allows me to in the spring and fall seasons when that's not frozen out there. This is I can come through here with hiking boots on and, and actually it's about a kilometer long detour. But, as you know me, I really love the tight cedar groves anyway, so this is a, this is my kind of country. So quiet and soft back in here. These cedars last forever and look down here on the ground. This must be a small pile that when they logged this, probably by the looks of these trees, 60 or 70 years ago, they had a few stragglers they didn't take, and they're still laying there in the ground. Now that I've opened this trail up, the, the deer run it really heavy. You can see how they've got it packed down. I won't have to worry about any little cedar nibbling along the side. They'll be keeping it, they'll be keeping it well browsed. didn't plan on walking this but now I got this far I just I couldn't turn around wish now I brought my pack along could have had our Brought feast right down this little quiet place.
I've seen a lot of beaver cut trees, but I got an idea this might be the biggest one I've ever seen. And I don't know how they actually got it to go over that quick. They left. There was 10 inches of solid, good timber in the middle of that tree. And I looked at the top, and it doesn't seem like it's really a, a leaning tree at all. They must have had a good wind or something to have that go with that much wood. Well, these balsams are dying off in this area. Then they, they tend to open things up and I looked over here and I never noticed these big cedars before and I've probably walked by here a hundred times or more. But you can see that is some gigantic old white cedar. Trail work is all done. Look at my little snack bag here. It looks like I have one of Bonnie's cherry pies. And we'll call that the main course. Then the dessert will be some dark chocolate kisses. Let's see what else we got in the, the drink department. Well, we got a Flash of coke, and I think I have a half a thermos of coffee yet. So I'm gonna call that pretty good shape. We're always finding out new things and when it came to the original patent on this land there was two names down. But then a friend of mine was up at the courthouse and he coming across some information and he got when they were settling up this man's estate for this piece of ground. And here both those names were his. He had two names. Well in fact he had three names. But there were both of his names were on that, on that deed. I, Confusing for us. <laughs>